Hey everyone, it's good to see you again. We're on our way right now to meet a very special guest. So please join along. Very happy to have you here. We're here with Dr. Natalia Kanem. Uh, you're the executive director of UNFPA. Uh, but Natalia, if I can start, could you tell us a little bit more about what it is that you do as UNFPA? UNFPA is the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, and we're active in over 120 countries. And what we're doing is working for women and girls' health. Well, I, I mean, that's incredible work. What would you say is the most important thing with regards to action that needs to happen to ensure that we can get safe and uh, safe drinking water, but also sanitation to women and girls all around the world? The most important thing we can do, and why I'm so delighted to be here with you, Hajar, yes. is to put this agenda in the hands of the young people of the world. Young people are really smart in a world of eight billion, they represent almost a quarter of the human population. Right now, there are 500 million girls who are in need of menstrual hygiene support. We're on the second day of the conference. Tomorrow, there's the final day after which people go back to their work, so go back to you know their desks where they do their everyday job. What would be your message to them? How can we make sure that people just don't fall back into their silos and just focus on just water or just on gender or just on you know intergenerational perspectives how can we work together better international solidarity makes a difference and it's too much to expect the small island developing state the least developed country to self finance some of this water agenda it's a universal agenda and we should also look for universal financing for UNFPA in our humanitarian work we also see the damage that's done when the uh, root causes of lack of peace, where you have conflict, there's so much burden on the shoulders of women and girls. So when we leave, we also have to pay attention to the equality and the equity dialogues and discussions and stand up for peace in a world that's desperate. So I think we're all going to be much more enlightened and it's going to increase my advocacy and hopefully your advocacy so that these are not seen as luxuries. These are part of human dignity and part of human rights. Thank you so much. Thank you. So as I said, guys, that was a really special guest and a really special conversation. If this shows one thing, then it's the importance of finding the interlinkages between water, gender, equality, intergenerational efforts and really all working together. So I would say let's keep on working together and moving forward.